In this video, we're going to take the piece that we threaded before. We're going to turn it down to 850 thousandths as it shows on the print. We're going to turn this down to length. This section is supposed to be a total of 9 16 of an inch long, 0.5625. And then we're going to turn 5 16 of that, 0.3125, down to 0.3125 in diameter. Now I'm using a collet on this because the collet is not going to damage the threads. If you were to put this into a three jaw chuck, then it would probably ding up those threads pretty badly. I'm going to go ahead and face it to length first because the larger diameter is going to make it easier to measure with my micrometer. And I am at uh, 734 on the nose. So let me go ahead and put that into the digital readout. Now I should be able to just move that up and keep taking facing passes until it reaches 0.5625. That looks just about perfect. We're at 0.562 and six tenths, one tenth over. I'm going to go ahead and turn down the diameters now. Beautiful. So I've got this part turned down to 850 as it is on the print. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter for 5 sixteenths length. That's 0.3125. All right, so that last pass put us somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 thousandths oversized, and I went ahead and got into the shoulder and pulled out. Now I stopped shy. I stopped at about 306. Um, that way I can get a measurement on my length as well as my diameter and get them both right on the nose. Alright, I'm showing 3.30 and about 4 tenths. We're 3.065, right where we should be. Okay, so I've got my form tool ready to go to form the ball on the end of this. Now it's really important to remember with form tools is you've got a lot of contact between your tool and your part. So you need to be turning this a lot slower than any calculated RPM you would use. I'm going to try this at 120 and see if it works. You also want to use a lot of cutting oil just to make sure that everything doesn't uh, overheat. I'm going to feed in by hand. Just because I've got a little more control there, I can slow it down if I need to. And I'm going to slow down if I feel any kind of chatter happening at all. Mostly I'm just looking at the chips to make sure they're not too thick. And I left the, uh, the stock for the ball a thousandth oversized, so it's at 313 right now, 313 and a half. I'm just going to go until that last little bit of flat right there in the middle disappears. I think that's it. That looks pretty good. I've got just a little bit of a bump there on the end. I'm going to clean that up with a file at higher speeds. Um, and that's just from where the form tool didn't make it all the way around. I also didn't get all the way over to the shoulder, but that really doesn't matter. That's just a relief so the swivel pad can move around a little bit. Okay, let me just clear up that little nub right there in the middle. pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use my 45 tool and break these two corners slightly. Okay, so this part's ready to go over to the mill. So right now I'm going to go ahead and cut down this section right here that's been turned down to 850 thousandths, down to 5 eighths of an inch square. And in order to do this, I'm going to use a 5C collet block. So this uses the same 5C collet that I used in my lathe to do this ball and you've got this ring back here to tighten up the collet. Uh, the set also comes with a hex block and it comes with a cam lock that you could use as well. 
Um, I prefer using the ring because the cam lock, uh, if you don't get it tight enough, it can slip. The only drawback to the ring is that it needs a spanner wrench and it doesn't come with one on the set. Now I bought this one. It uh, happens to be a proto, but uh, the main thing you're looking for is an eighth inch pin. You could probably get away with three sixteenths, um, but you're looking for a range of three quarters of an inch to two inches on the spanner. So we just put our part in there. I'm going to keep it a little ways away from the collet so I don't end up uh, machining into the collet with my end mill. I'm going to tighten that up as much by hand and then what I usually do is put it in the vise and I use the spanner on the back side. You want that good and tight because you want to make sure that's not going to come out of there. Now this part isn't strictly necessary but I've set up a table stop here so that I can bump my collet block right up against it. That way I get it in the same spot this way each time. Like I said, it's not strictly necessary for cutting the flats because your cutter is wider than the piece that you're cutting and you know, you've got some wiggle room there. However, you do have those two cross holes that are going to be drilled through the middle of this piece right here and I don't want to have to find the edge for each operation each time I flip the collet block. I've got my collet block set up on half inch parallels. Again, that's not strictly necessary either. You can put it down against the vise jaw. But this way I've got a little bit more contact because the parallels run the whole length of the vise. Plus it gets it high enough that I don't have to do weird stuff with my table stop. I'm running my mill at 1115. This is a 3 8 4 flute carbide end mill. And I'm just going to bring it up slowly until I touch off on this diameter. And I know that I'm at 850 thousandths now. I know that I need to be at 625 total, which means I have to take half of the difference off of this first side. So the difference between 850 and 625 is 225 thousandths. And of course if you divide that by 2 you get 112 and a half. Now just like any other kind of cut, I'm not going to take all of that in one shot on this first one. I'm going to maybe take some token amount that I know is going to be too small, uh, 50 thousandths, 75 thousandths, something like that. And then I'm going to take a measurement and see where I actually am. Touching off on a round object with an end mill is somewhat tricky because you've got a very tiny area of contact there, which is another good reason to take an amount that you know is too small because this touch off might be a tenth or it might be ten thousandths. What I usually do is slowly crank up on the knee while I move the X back and forth and that makes it a little bit easier to see when you touch off. There we are, and yeah, I think I touched off pretty heavily there, but uh, we'll see. I'm going to take off 50 thousandths, and uh, we'll take a measurement. So I've centered my cutter over the part, and I've locked my x-axis. I'm going to make all of my moves with the y. All right, there's my first 50 thousandths, and this is just so I can get a measurement and get my bearings. Okay, so like I said, I'm trying to take half the difference between 850 and 625 off of this side, which means that my target dimension from the bottom of the diameter there to the top of the flat is 737 and a half thousandths. Uh, right now my mic reading is 797 and a half, so I've got to take 60 thousandths off. So here's 50 and then I'll take uh, 10 at the end. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's 737 and 4 tenths. Now realistically, this square should have a pretty large tolerance. I mean, there's no reason for it to have any kind of tight tolerance at all. It's not going to be rotating quickly, so balance isn't an issue. Uh, the only thing it's going to be mating with it would be a wrench, and those are usually larger than the nominal size anyway. So I should be able to take the block out, flip it to the next side, and make the same cut at the same Z setting, uh, for all four sides and I'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of five-eighths of an inch square certainly close enough for this part So I've bumped my block up against my table stop uh, Again for this operation that's not totally necessary But when it comes to drilling the two cross holes that are going to go all the way through I don't want to have to find the edges for each operation because that takes time Thank you. 
this here is the reason that we turned it down to 850 thousandths to begin with so that this corner is already knocked off and we won't end up with a sharp one that we would have to later hit with a file. There we go. Just like that we've got a square. So now I've got to do the cross holes and they've got to be smack dab in the middle of each face both in the X and the Y direction. So I'm going to use my edge finder to find one edge and then the other edge and move into half the distance and then I'll do the same thing here but first I have to knock off the burrs that I've created by cutting the flats. So I've got the edge finder in my drill chuck and in order to find the exact center I'm going to find the edge on the back side over here and then I'm going to find it again over here. I'll zero on the back side and then whatever reading I get on this side over here, I'll divide that in half, and that should be the middle. And I'll do the same thing with the x-axis. <clears throat> Alright, so that's 818 thousandths on my digital readout from zero to over here. Since I'm doing it this way, I don't have to compensate for half the diameter of the tip, because I'm offset by half of it this way, and half of it this way. I could just split that measurement in half, and I'll be right there. So that means I'll go into 409 thousandths on my digital readout, and I'll re-zero. So like I said, now I'll do the exact same thing on the x-axis. Okay, and I'm showing 451 and a half there. Move this back to zero, and I'm locking both of my axes. This way I know my table's not going to move on me. So for our purposes, we can drill this hole all the way through, we can turn it once and drill that other hole all the way through, and this part's done. Here's a spot drill. And let me get my 3 16 drill. So I'm using a screw machine length drill, or a stubby length drill. And even though I'm using the shorter drill, I'm still going to go ahead and spot. Uh, because these drills can still walk, they're just not going to walk as far as a jobber length drill, the one of the longer ones. Really, it's just good practice to spot before you drill, period. Put a little dab of oil there, and let's drill it. Alright, that's one hole down. I'll switch back to my spot drill and flip the block 90 degrees. Now since I have my table stop set up, I know that I can bump the block up against the stop and I'm still going to be centered on the square. Okay, that's that part done. I just need to take it out of the collet block and do some deburring here with the file and I'll use a countersink by hand to get the edges of the holes.